So yeah, make sure you hit up uh, Kenny on Twitter. You know where all the jobs is. We keep him, we keep him in there. Hopefully, he'll help you guys out a little more than he does his friend that put him on the geeked out and. Here he go. Here he go. Fantasy boom of us, you know what I'm saying? But you know, hopefully he'll look out for y'all. But since this is the money design of the trip, don't got a cap on my spirit to get bet on myself and I triple the flip. Came from the streets, I'ma stick to the script. We popping bottles like we went a trip. Rather fill up accounts than empty a clip. Ten on the ground, so I never slip. They love you to hate you. I'm watching them switch, 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 switch. They hate you, they love you, I'm watching them switch, 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 switch. They love you, they hate you, I'm watching them switch Be much a cream, I'm mixing the labels Run up the numbers, I rule at the table Too many kings, I can never be able Run up on me and the ending is fatal Wanna be surfaced cause we got the wave You already know what it is Don't even be alarmed Cause if you subscribe to the channel Then you're still seeing it Feeling like we've been gone But if you ain't, because all you do is watch this We're back with season 3 It's me and Rook And my man's Kenny up here, financial advisor what to do? Streets. Word. Where he got his his doc at. You know what I mean? We're gonna talk about what most people want. Before we do that, channel's blown up since y'all um, been on the Rook Chan show. I'm saying we appreciate y'all subscribers, y'all that watch, like, comment, Patreon gang, Cash Up gang, all that merch gang. We appreciate all y'all because we started at the low, low, low 400. And as you can see, numbers is uh, like 4,100. So we're going up. Thanks to all the podcasts and people like Kim did on there, geeked out. I'm saying, what is it? Boom of us now. Chess D. Rook. Resting behind the curtain. So everyone everyone that's part of it, we appreciate y'all. And everyone that watches it, we definitely appreciate y'all. So we here. We got a new we got a new joint coming out too. I don't even want to know. If, I'm saying I might go ahead and let out the bag now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm in conversation with some people. You know what I'm saying? With this with this certain lady, she might be bringing a, a battle rap podcast to y'all on here. But this will be the first show that I will not be on. So you guys might be excited about that. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be strictly three young ladies or two. That's going to discuss what's going on in this battle rap world. So, you know, we, we talk about that. So, so, the is five, son. That says a lot. <laughs> you already know. But today's conversation, we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. 30 minutes, though, because we've got to get out of here. You know what I mean? Talk a little about the metaverse, what it is, what it ain't. Talk about some Bitcoin, some NFTs. Kenny's pretty much going to lead it, let Rook ask some shit, too, but... You know, I ain't gonna fake the phone line. I know everything that there is to know about this, so I'm being more of a listener like y'all are. So, with that being said, like, you know, can it, can it what it is? All right, so let's. I'm gonna start with crypto because crypto, I, I got a little bit more experience in that. I got a homeboy who he really into it. He make over six figures with just crypto, even though he's an engineer. He got a good, steady, regular paying job. But between crypto and the uh, uh, sports betting that's what me and him do that's all we talk about we, we ain't got anything else in common crypto and sports betting basically he do he actually trying to make his own nft but we can talk about that later so with crypto a lot of people want to look at bitcoin because bitcoin a big name got a couple other ones dogecoin really boomed last year that same time that gamestop and amc had a little moment in the sun but uh one big one that i think a lot of people should look at that i'm looking at that i was in i hop in and out because i don't like the whole long term i don't i don't trust things that's just how i am uh it's solana solana they call it ethereum killer because ethereum is the other big is one of the other big uh cryptos uh solana has increased in the past year almost twelve thousand percent. that shit is fucking crazy it's at 239 right now 239 dollars and three cents i hopped in at 28 dollars. i hopped out at 100 i hopped back in at 150 and i hopped back out before it hit 200 so depending on how many shares you got in that that can make you a lot of money it depends on how much money you got to work with when I first started doing crypto, I didn't have a lot of money. So I was just buying pieces of Bitcoin and as it rose, I sold it. And you make your, because you don't have to own a whole Bitcoin. I don't know if everybody know that. You can have, with crypto, you can have any tiny percent. You could buy a dollar worth of any crypto. And as it jump, you buy the percentage that the dollar is worth, you can make money off of that. You don't got to have the, a whole coin in and of itself. Because hey, people don't, got, I mean, people don't just have money for that one Bitcoin anymore. They used to when it was 200, 300. Now it's, yeah. 
that's that's why I, I don't know if people know about that Tom Brady situation. He gave a lot of things to that that person. He got he had two season tickets. One of the things he offered him like here's one bitcoin. People are like one bitcoin. That's fit. That's fifty grand. That's, that's not. He got fifty grand for that for that six hundred ball. So there's different ways to look at it. Thing about Solana is you ain't got to stare at just Solana to know what it's gonna do. Solana directly does exactly what Ethereum does. That's why it's called the Ethereum Killer because it has more cap space because it got a seventy five billion dollar market cap. Which is insane. That means you, we keep buying for a while. You got a lot for people to buy. It ain't gonna just fall out the sky. So, if you want to look at crypto, maybe look at Solana. It's two thirty nine. When people when, when crypto when Bitcoin was down there, keep going, not gonna keep going. It did. So we had the entry point. Now it's at a entry point. I mean, you could have got if you got it in December twenty twenty, you'd be eating good right now. But it ain't too late. It's never too late. So on the crypto joint, Solana is a big one. That's good. So, what's one? I mean, you probably feel it now. What's one someone should start with if their pockets is low, and what's one someone should start with if they're all right? Well, that's that again. That's part of the beauty of crypto. You don't gotta have like the whole amount. You can buy a little bit of Solana. But I think if you got a little bit of disposable income, I think Ethereum is a little bit more solid. It's a little longer lasting than Solana. So Ethereum is a bit. It's a little, of course it costs a little bit more money. So. Ethereum is a good one if you got your pocket established. If you got pockets even more established. You're probably not watching the video, but you get that Bitcoin. It ain't going nowhere no time soon. But if you want to get on the ground flow, so long is the way to go for me because that's why I did. Got on the ground floor. My homeboy was telling me when it was at like 30, 40. He's like, yo, look at this. Look at this. What's the, like, what's, so, the what's the stock code for both if you have it in front of you? Uh, Solana is S O L. Ethereum is ETH. There okay, y'all go. Okay, so I didn't know. There you go. All right, go ahead. My bad. Uh, the ho- typical hold time on Solana, so it's not just me, just to let y'all know this. The typical hold time on Solana is 17 days. I mean, people dropping in. So that's when you see it drop, don't panic because the typical person only hold it for 17 days anyway. It got If people dropping it after 17 days, it's going to fall a little bit. But you got to know, every time this thing's ever bottomed out, it hit that ground flow, like no, it bounced right back up. So again, high, high market cap, high volume in 24 hours. So look at that. 72% buy, 28% sell. You can't get much better than that because people people think 50 50 what you look for, and in some cases, yeah, but with, with crypto, it don't got to be because some of these people are in it for the long, long, long haul. So, some of these people backed by banks and institutions. So, remember, if you're working by yourself or you're working with a small group of people, you ain't got the same power as somebody holding all the power. So, I think if it's called crypto, Solana, Ethereum, keep, keep your eyes on those. I'm not the king at this, but um, from talking to people close into my circle, there's a lot of mining going on, and Again, you don't need to own a whole coin, but if you got a good amount, you can add to that piece by piece. Right. Ethereum, even though it has challenges coming to it, it's been booming in what they said was going to be a fall boom for cryptos. It did boom just like Bitcoin boomed. I thought Bitcoin had capped out. It had went to 66 grand, which is its peak hit since it's come out. But um, Ethereum has moved up. It's you know, going up in waves about three to four hundred dollars a piece, and people are moving that money and getting big profits off of it. So it, there, there's great possibilities with crypto once you really dive in, give it some time to study it, and then figure out how to navigate that situation to make money. I know people are staying home right now because they're mining cryptocurrency. And they're making the money that they would have made at their nine to five. And, and then some. I can make that money. That's a start. I'm not going back to work. Facts. Uh, to can mention, uh, go ahead, go ahead. What's good with Litecoin? That shit boomed um, not too long ago. It looks like it's. Uh, it's Li- Litecoin, think about it is right. So Litecoin is one of those coins that's in the back of everybody's mind because the first coin. In my opinion, from what I've seen, the first coin everyone learned about after Bitcoin was Litecoin. It was because it was available on Robinhood a lot. It was available on everything. So when people were like, oh, Bitcoin, damn, I already missed that train. Litecoin was that next one up. It was real cheap. It was under a dollar. There's a lot of people. But there's people mining it. But I think we got such a volume of options now that Litecoin took like a back seat. But it did have that boom because everyone knows about it. So, you know, when you got certain industries, certain, like, like I said, you got 
people who work in the whole firms, when they mining, they they looking at other, they looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, all these other things. And back of their mind, like, you know what? We bought four or five of these. Let's go get that one Litecoin. Four or five of these, one Litecoin. So as that develop, you know, the little people, me and my homeboys, we're looking at Litecoin because as, as people buy, as volume increase, it's moving up a little bit. Like, you know what? Let's go. And as everyone's noticing that, and you got your uh, Wall Street bets on uh, Reddit, these, you know, kind of black market looking at red is not the dark web but it's like the entry level like a lot of people looking at that shit so when people talking about that stuff on there which is what happened with GameStop, that's how that shit boom like that a lot of people was looking at so it's like oh, on wall street bets so people talk on wall street bets about stuff stuff just naturally happens because you know it got heavy traffic so litecoin is, is due for another boom soon but again it's because that that coin that everyone knows about but it's not prevalent so i, I think it's, it's definitely due for another boom soon but to, to comment on that thing that you said earlier, he said Ethereum had a little couple of little snags. The Fed is the Fed was trying to kill coins. They said, "Oh, it's non-regulatory. We we don't want nothing." And and coins won. So the Fed the Fed the Fed can't stop this hustle. I'm gonna tell you that right now. They they re- they can regulate the stock market because of the way volume works. There's there's tangibility to those with these coins. They're gonna keep climbing, keep climbing because there's there's the tangibility is not as low as say a uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which yeah, we know what that is. We know it got investments and everything else, but you can only have so much of those. But coins is not the case. Yeah, yeah. the Fed want something they can touch as far as um currencies right. concerned. Like gold. They want gold, silver. Yeah. What, would you, what, would you people, what would you say to people that are like, why should I buy or invest in Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, or any of that? Because there's so many different things out there. Like how do I know which one's a bust? And which one isn't? Like, which one's legit, which one's not? Well, when it comes to legitimacy, they're all legitimate. Because you could say they're not. Like, Dogecoin was a joke. Like, it was legitimately made as a joke. The people made it like, oh, coins are stupid, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, people were making thousands of dollars off them because they boomed on on a Wall Street bet, on a, on YouTube videos, Twitter, talking people talking about it. Think about it, again, with all investing, with sports bet, and all things that scare money don't make no money. So if you don't, if you, you don't got to do it. But again, this because yeah, capital is at risk. The only way that you making money, not, not the only way, let me not say it like that. But a prevalent way people making money is someone on us on the other end is losing money. The difference is we want these big firms who could afford to lose the money to be losing the money while me, little man, small man, we making the money because we, we, we trying to eat. It's, it's, level, it's, it's almost in a sense leveling the playing ground because these people have been playing with unfair rules for a long time. And now we changing the rules and we like, because here's the thing, like, I'm in a group chat with like 30 people. If we all buy certain shares of certain things, it don't change the market too, too much. But it reinforces it for us because that's what the market, that's what these firms do. They buying up big shares in big groups in big volume. So naturally the market moves with them. So if you do the same thing with a group of friends, same thing can happen for you. That's that's I've li- I've literally noticed that some of the things that I'm using to invest in, I'm investing with other people. So because of so many the high volume of other people looking at it, it causes things to bottom out slower. So that's just the way you gotta look at it sometimes. Yeah, you, again, scare money don't make no money. If you think, oh, why to do this? If you if it's money you can't risk, don't don't risk your your rent, your mortgage, your water bill on this. You, this is disposable income you're supposed to be using. This uh, I was gonna buy these shoes, but instead I'm gonna do this. This I was gonna buy this, but I ain't gonna you know. That, that's how you got to look at it. You got to use disposable income because you're throwing money away anyway. Like you said, because like, some people will be like, y'all not said this was this was what we supposed to do. I don't put my rent up. Now I'm out of the house. What y'all going to do about it? So I'm glad you did uh, put that disclaimer in there. Yeah. I personally, like when I, when it comes to sports betting, that's another way I make a lot of money. That's that, To me, sports betting is investing because I know sports. I've been watching sports my whole life. I know I know for the most part, except combat sports, anything can happen on the thing. Let me ask you a question about that. So how do people sports bet? Well, in Florida in particular, uh, it just became legal. So the only way to do it in Florida was where me and Chance live. The only way to do that is through Hard Rock. The Hard Rock sports book. That's the only way you can do it. So if it's not using through that, I mean, there's other ways, you know, Panama City, all, you know, all this other stuff. But, you know, it's, so is Hard it's, Rock, uh, is it a website or is it straight, like, go to it? It's only They only have an app. They're not using a website. I believe you can actually go into the casinos too, but I'm not too sure about that. I got to double check that myself. I've been meaning to, but. When I got the app on my phone, it's kind of hard to go and drive up to Hollywood when I live in Miami. So, but you got other options. You got Tampa, you got Hollywood as far as hard rock goes. Other the Jersey is big. I think Jersey lasts in the month of either August or October. I'm not sure. They made over 
No, it's, I know it's legal, but I'm saying I'm not sure of which month it was, but it was a billion dollars on just sports betting from just Jersey. Dude, all right, you didn't download DraftKings Sportsbook? I can't because Florida, the only person that you're allowed a sports book with is, is Hard Rock. Exclusive. Exclusive. That's the deal that uh, the governor signed with, with, with the uh, local uh, indigenous people. So I can only use DraftKings Sportsbook when I come to Jersey to visit my family because right. New York City is not legal and they track your location. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, like you said, fight sports, man. Put a hundred dollars on Rose Namajunas in her first fight against against Zhang, and the payout. All right, like what was it, like four hundred dollars because she was the underdog in the fight. You know, if you're watching sports your whole life and you got some disposable income, it, it's it's a good game to play. You know, what's life without risk? And if you don't take any risks, man, you, you're not gonna get anything. Hey, that, that was actually wild. Not to interrupt you, but Rose, when Rose already beat her the first fight, and then they made it an underdog the second fight. That's that's a no brainer to me because ain't a lot so of change. The first fight, she was a big underdog. The second yeah. fight, I think the, the numbers are pretty even. They evened it up, but she the champ. She coming back. I, I, I was surprised that they still did that. But uh, another thing about sports band is um, I know like points bad. You got to be in, like again, they track your location, so you can use that in uh, Arizona, Jersey. It's like, but with, again, Hollywood with Florida, the deal is it's only hard rock. So another thing about sports betting is, like this past week, we know, like we talked about in our other video, uh, it was it was a weird week in NFL, and there's some people just throwing flyers out there. It, it just happened. But if you were to bet on the five under the five underdogs that won this week on just those, you would put a five round parlay on those, put a hundred dollars on that, you'd have made fifteen thousand dollars. So sometimes it's, it's shots in the dark. Sometimes again, it's how much money do you got that's disposable income though? Because I know again, we talked about a couple weeks ago that buddy who put that thousand dollars on Mike White leading the league in passing yards, he he had that either he had that thousand dollar disposable income or he got a time machine. Cause ain't no way you're putting thousand dollars on a flyer like that. Because people put flyers all the time. Sports almanac. Yeah. Either you got a a flyer should be five dollars, twenty dollars, depending on how your income looking. Cause really? I'm not putting hundred dollars on no flyer. So yeah, right. out, I think it should things. But it ain't Biff. Biff right. word. Yo, um, like there's so many different ways to bet sports. Like, you know, uh, I went to the sports, I went to the to the to the big board in Vegas. Like that, that shit is insane. TVs everywhere. That's the that's the number uh, New York Stock Exchange, basically. Yeah, you, it's the New York Stock Exchange of gambling. Yeah. And I, I won some money on Clemson. This is years ago. But my boy was like, yo, you watch so much football. Just do it. Bet the second half on Clemson. Got got a couple thousand dollars in. Went and played with that because, you know, you're out in Vegas. Need something to play with. Uh, you could bet spreads. You can bet totals. You can bet scores over and under. Bet futures. The futures. All right. You can hedge your freaking bet at halftime. And 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 make changes. There's so many different ways. My favorite way to bet is just winners and losers, because if you watch ESPN nowadays, they got bad beats on Monday nights, and it can go really terrible. All right, you can pick a team to win by ten, and yeah. they're up by twenty, and all of a sudden they win by two in like the last two minutes of the game. It's freaking yeah. terrible. And it's it's heart crushing. I've seen people throw their drinks, tip the waiter, <laughs> and leave the building. My two favorite ways, I do, I do, I have, I have I'm a little partial to futures. Like I like picking it. I think that's just because I like thinking I know a, too, a little too much. I like picking the MVP ahead of the season, all that stuff. Especially at the beginning of the season when the bet's kind of long. You know, the odds are a little longer. But because I am like I think uh, beginning of the season, Steph Curry was like 800. Eight, he was in the favorite, but he was 800 to one to win MVP. Now it's like plus 250. So it's short and real fast if these you drop mm -hmm. a couple 50 point games. But my two favorites is over under, like total points, especially NFL, and money, money line. Cause just picking a winner. Cause like you said, winning by plus seven and then the last bit of the game, they're not playing defense anymore. And now you're like, ah, oh, there go my money. So yeah. if I, if I, I bet it would have to be straight up, like win, lose. Yeah. Spread spreads living live and dying by spreads ain't for me. I'll bet on the spread of the spread. Living and dying by it, no. Check this out with this disclaimer, like uh, Kenny just said with the with the, uh, the Bitcoin. This is if you have money to spend, because if yeah, this I'm information now. if this information is new to you, like it is for me, and you live in Florida, and you had no idea that there was an app available for you to, to wager 
on sports. I don't want you guys losing your homes or your wives or your husbands or whatever because you just found out this information and you're about to go gamble whole body. So disposable money only, stuff that you can play with. Use that. Don't use your rent money. Yeah, don't do that. You bird. Ten dollars can get you some money, man. You you know it, it, you don't have to bet big all the time. Some like like Kenny was saying, if the odds are really really against something, that's a really great flyer to take, especially like in the fight game or or in sports any given Sunday or something. You take those odds. Ten twenty dollars can end up getting you a thousand dollars or four or five hundred dollars, and then maybe you build and go from there. Man, I'll tell you, uh, DraftKings especially, I think it is. It's a, they're really famous for this because I know with uh, Hard Rock, I think there's a, there's a minimum. I don't, I don't, I don't put like dollar bets, so I don't really know. But I do know like certain, depending on what you're using, there's minimums. But DraftKings minimum is ten cents. So this is people putting like fifteen round parlays together of ten cents is gonna make them thirty, thirty grand, forty, fifty grand, and it's insane. So again, depends. Like I know for a while. When I first started betting, what I would do was for NFL Sunday, Sunday only, one o'clock games only, I'm picking all the underdogs. Put a dollar on it. Cause that, and you'd be surprised how much money because it's all underdogs. So that makes the odds real long. It's a parlay. So it's stacking on top of each other. Cause you know, when you're stacking odds, even if you pick all favorites, it ends up being long odds because you, you're stacking it because you got to get them all right. Except, you know, on DraftKings, you can pull out early depending on if you pick a games at different times. That's another way you do it. You tier them. So you pick one one o'clock game, one four o'clock game, you pick the Sunday night game. So if you you ride on the first two and you're not sure about something like, damn, I don't know what the Chiefs going to do this week because every week they're a different team. Pull out and then you made your bread. So it depends on how you want to look at it. There's a lot of different ways. We got, like, like you said. Big 12 football, bro. Mm-hmm. Yo, for, for years, Big 12 football. Oh college. oh, college football is where bro, is it? So Big many 12. teams. Chance of telling you, if you bet the under – they're going to get the over in the fourth quarter in like six minutes. Yeah. I, the, or the, the total could be like 60 points and they're at like 20 in the fourth. And all of a sudden they, it, the, the, the total's at 70. Yeah. That would be the worst for me. Sometimes, I, don't, you know. I don't know anything about college football. So that would be the, the worst thing for me to get into. But side note, before we move on to the next, to the next topic, because I'm, this will be here forever. If you have friends that know that you can gamble, know the app and didn't tell you they may not be your friends <laughs> because they may not have wanted you to get money too so hey man, hey, man. Be, yo, you did, my hard rock a little new i'm not gonna be introduced because again this you get this bug it get crazy i'm telling you that right now because i love sports there's, there's not a lot of sports you ask anybody there's not a lot of sports i'm not gonna watch but let me be honest i, I watch i don't watch hockey i watch the florida panthers yeah but since i started gambling You've been on. Oh, I'll be watching. I'm watching every game. You don't want this bug. You're already a busy man, Chance. I don't know if you want this bug, man. Can you bet on WWE? Because it's so predictable. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. If, I don't not, know not, if not on Hard Rock. Not on Hard Rock. But there's there's oh, sites man. that do that. That's not on Hard Rock. Hard, Rock. Hard Rock don't want that that smoke. But I'd be, be a billionaire. That, that, that bet, son. I'd be a billionaire. Betting on I've WWE. I've seen somebody bet. Uh, I seen this online. I don't even know what site they use, but it's again, it's not Hard Rock because again, they don't do that. But uh, I know somebody bet that CM Punk was going to beat Darby Allen in that debut match, and the odds was on. They were favorable odds because everybody knew CM Punk had to win. It's his first match in eleven years. But I mean, you put a certain amount of money, even the favorite will make you a lot of bread. So if it's WWE, like you said, you know what's happening. So like, the, but the thing is about I do know from listening to other people, other states, DQ was not an option. So as you, as me and you know, yeah. WWE got a lot of DQs. So that's not an option. You lose, that's a lot of money you're throwing away because win or lose, no matter what you put down, if it's DQ, that don't count. So yeah, yeah so careful with that one. So if y'all watching this and y'all ain't watched the show before, we do have wrestling podcast. So make sure you check that out in the playlist and subscribe. But um, moving on, metaverse. How real do you think it is? And give people a brief summary of what it is. Uh, how real I think it is. Oh, when when rich people say something real, it's happening. It don't matter if it wasn't true. It's rich people who backing it up. It's gonna happen. It's gonna, the, the truth will change for rich people. Like especially when you talk about rich as Mark Zuckerberg, metaverse. Um, I know the generics. Like I don't know a lot, a lot about it. But it, if they want it to happen, it's gonna happen. I do know that for sure. Because again, these these people we talk about people who race into the moon for fun. Ain't nothing on the moon. There's nothing they want there. But they're doing it just just because if they can do that. They can make 
in in real life sims happen which is basically so the way metaverse works is it's like it's, it's probably built for like a, yeah, there's, a, a there's, there's, there's examples of like roblox uh fortnite when they did the the concert yeah. with uh what's his face with uh boy that's in trouble now what's his name travis. they did one with travis yeah he was i think the first one I think I think I just seen something that Justin Bieber has a virtual concert coming out. So it's basically so it's like it's like Sims, but real life. Yeah. It's, like, it's VR to the next level. Yeah. Wow. It's definitely Damn. it's definitely gonna take place because the internet's been around how long? It's about time for the next evolution of it. If you're sitting in a New York studio, overpaying for rent, and you can't go nowhere, this might be the way to go. Cause uh, just oh, yeah. sitting there. Put your goggles on and you had a, you had a concert. Then again, we don't know how much they're gonna be charging for this stuff. So let me not say that yet. But I think we still, I think they still put in the Roblox, but it might also be farther along than we thought. Cause we already see when you open Facebook, it says from Meta. And you know Facebook already owns Instagram and everything but Twitter. So and like WhatsApp. And so it's gonna stuff that said from Facebook gonna start saying from Meta. So it might be farther along than we thought. Cause I know it's changing the company name. So now face so now Meta owns Facebook instead of Facebook being its own entity. So how how far is this along? It might be farther than we thought. So, because that's one thing about Zuckerberg, he, he played with his hands close to his chest. He, he played poker for real. Like I said, Zuckerberg ain't gonna talk about it if he ain't, if he ain't already got a head start. Yeah, facts. That's just how the person he is. So it's real, no doubt about Zuckerberg it. Zuckerberg sold us out to the feds. <laughs> I mean, so tying this back into the whole crypto and the currency, is there anything that someone should have their eye on before this metaverse blow up? Um. I mean, the stock, the stock is there's some stock, obviously, like I said, off air, that's obvious. Microsoft stock would be obvious, but this is if you have money like that to spend. Microsoft, um, Ubisoft, like shit like that. Like, I don't know. I, th- I think there's a couple of things in the works that you got to keep your eye on. You got like when you when you're involved in these kind of things, you got to watch the news for sure. And you got to um, I don't, don't want to say unbiased news because no such thing exists. But uh, look, look for fi- like financial news when it comes to this stuff, because that's what's what you're looking at. So think about it is right. Uh, when these type of things happen, people make deals like, oh, let's let's use only bit not only Bitcoin, but like let's say, oh, if you want to use if you want to buy those concert tickets on Meta, you can't use cash or you can only use like we see it all the time with concerts. Oh, you can only Visa gets first priority. So you probably do stuff like that where it's like Bitcoin gets first priority or these those type of deals. Cause um personally, this is something I just noticed because I'm still trying to get my PS5. There's been two PS5 restocks this month. Sony got something cooking. Don't don't sleep on like keep, keep your eye on the news because we went from when's the next restock? When the next restock? So two two restocks in one week. I still need my PS5, by the way. But two restocks in one week. It's kind of, it's kind of looking like whoa. Well, I thought we couldn't make these. Now now we plowed them out every two seconds. So keep your eyes on stuff like that. You got like some things is blatant. It's on the news straight up. They tell you some things. You got to just have antennas and use your common sense. And if you don't know, ask somebody who do know. Because again, I ain't gonna act like I know everything. But I got a homeboy. Again, he making his own NFT. Like he knows this stuff. So I got a question. I'll pop it over to him because even though I'm pretty sure about stuff that I know, like I've known stocks, I've been doing stocks since I was in high school. I know how things, certain things move because they repeat. It's a cycle, but certain things like, hey, what you think about this? Talk to people. Like the thing is, if a lot enough people doing it, you might just affect the market yourself. Like literally, that's how the market works. The market is social media affects the market all the time. Y'all, y'all seen Elon Musk t- tweeted about Dogecoin and he started jumping again. But think about it. He started talking about Bitcoin. People like, but he was just talking about Dogecoin. So that Bitcoin actually went in the opposite direction. It started going down. Because people like, he's not being serious. He's trying to not, because now they realize, oh, now he's trying to manipulate the market. Let's not listen to what mm-hmm. he says. So it can work both ways. So just keep your eye on the, your ear on the ground, eye on the news. What do you say to the people that still have some Dogecoin? Huh? What do you say to the people that still have some Dogecoin? Um, it depends on what their plan is. How long do you plan on holding that? Because I know when I had Dogecoin, because I dropped out pretty early in the race, which I don't, I wouldn't say I regret because I made money, but could have made some more. Um, how long do you plan on hold? Have a plan. Have a plan for every stock you buy. Have like the thing is for me personally, when I buy stocks, my plan is even about how much I'm willing to make because that shit could go to the moon, as they say. I always have a how much am I willing to lose before I say I'm not. I'm out of this. That's that's my I have it. my exit plan is how much I'm willing to lose. I never have an exit. Oh, once it gets to this much, I'm hopping out because it might just keep going. So I have an exit plan for lose. I probably should have one for game, but that's just not how I roll. But you, sh- if you, if you, if you're new to the game, like, oh, once they make this much, and it also depends on another thing, very, very important. How much attention can you pay? Because I'm personally a day trader, and my swings go from two to three days. Crypto, I let ride for a little longer. Some people can't afford to, yeah, again, depending on how what their job is, 
if you're a construction worker, you can't be staring at the stock market minute by minute. You might be a swing trader. Maybe you can't do that. You may be looking at week to week. So that's also very important if you're new to trading. How long can you, how much percentage can you hold and how long can you hold something? Because it's not very liquid in some cases. If you got to hold for three months, be ready for that money to be gone for three months. Again, that's why you probably should be playing with house money anyway. Exactly. Rook, you have a question on Metaverse or we're going to move on? Man, we can go into this metaverse thing for a while. We might have to revisit it. We can move on because uh that 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 thing is it bothers me a little bit, but we're gonna have to revisit he, it. You're the only one, he ain't the only one. Yeah, because the same page with that room. It might be a different day. Um so segue to what you said earlier, NFTs. What are what are NFTs to the people that don't know? So the the literal definition of NFT, I actually don't know, but I do know what they are. So when you buy an NFT is not exclusive rights. It's partially exclusive rights to any image or video. Uh, it could be a JPEG. It could be any, like it could be any of these, any of those type of files. I think they even try to talk about uh, NFTs for for voice, for like sound, which is gonna be wild because um, isn't that what music is? But it might be another yeah, they're thing. Doing they're doing it for audio too. Yeah, they, they that's they trying to make that thing like boom. So when you own an NFT, it depends on what you like. If it's a uh, Again, this there's so many. This this thing has it's so diverse and it's still growing, but in a lot of cases, uh, the most famous cases from what I see is pictures, the JPEGs. So you own a JPEG, and you and it depend on the volume. Let's say something with a hundred volume. So that means you and ninety nine other people are the only people who have this image. So when you want to sell it, so it's, it's kind of like art, but not the art that's in the museum. The art that's in rich people houses, like not the museum. Those have value. But if that's just get stolen, you can't sell it because you, you're going to jail and somebody getting the insurance money. So when it comes to like the, the ones that's in somebody's house, somebody paid for that. Somebody went to an auction, they put money on that. It's the same thing as you owning that. So it's, it's, you got to look at it like that. You own this piece of art for this amount of money. Now you got videos, the videos a little bit more because now if someone sees that exact clip that you own on like a YouTube or a Twitter, now you're getting the residuals, you're getting that money back. It's like elevator music, like I said earlier to y'all. Like if a rapper, not even a rapper, any type of musician make a song and they end up in the elevator, they getting paid, they getting them change in the mail somehow. It's coming back slowly but surely. And that's how, kind of how that works. So every time it's sold again, if you don't know who made it, that is. If it's every time it's sold again, you make a little bit more money. Every time it's played somewhere, you make some money. So NFT is a, is a expanding ball game, but it's, it's a lot. So I, I think, you know, if, if you got, again, Got the cash. You're looking for another way to make money. NFTs is a nice way to make it. If you can get them alerts, how much attention you got? Because if you got them Twitter alerts, because Twitter right, where I get news for NFTs, you can't watch. That's not something that's gonna pop up on the news. But you on Twitter, set up the right alerts. Oh, this dude who make NFTs all the time, or he helps design NFTs for somebody else. He dropping this because these rapper dudes who starting to hop in the NFT game, they ain't sitting there drawing these NFTs. They paying somebody to draw them. So that person gotta get have their own clout too. So. They talking about making an NFT, bam. Just so you look at that, okay. What, what, what's this new? Or even if you just decide, it's like it's like um, what's another way to look at it? Instead of art, trading cards. Like remember, remember when we was younger people oh, used to buy baseball cards, football cards, NFTs. That's basically that's basically the same thing. It's based. Um, so it was explained briefly. Um, non fungible token, right? The only yeah. thing that I have with NFTs is the highlight value. So, cause that's the, that's how I learned about NFTs. I didn't know about the other stuff until I talked to you guys and saw more stuff on social media, but I'm a sports head and this became a, a thing of topic and E60 decided to cover it a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, like I said, bought a LeBron James highlight. Somebody bought a Russell Westbrook highlight. They're buying posterizations. All right. The, that clip, if it's 10 seconds or whatever, they own pieces of that clip. They own pieces of that digital um, content. And wherever it's played, they get money off of it and they can sell it. Um, it's like they um, one of the guys that really bought into it and made a lot of money. Um, so it's like buying a pack of trading cards from top yeah. and you get you get like a, a piece of content that might be worth a lot of money inside that pack. So you might get that one highlight is worth 200 grand. And now, now maybe the other stuff worth, you know, a dollar, $200 or something. But you have now, instead of having the card of it, you have a digital copy of this clip or this highlight. And that LeBron James highlight, they said was worth like 250 grand. And I don't understand how this works. Well, I mean, to make it worth that much money. 
they just said it's a volatile market, but it's also a lucrative one. So like, it's it's hell of all the time. But think about it like this, right? You look at a, like a Van Gogh hanging in a museum. Who said how much that was? Some person at one point said it was worth that much money, and because it keep getting older, and he can't make another one, he did. Is the value keep going up? So again, LeBron can't make another Cleveland Cavalier poster in that exact game because he's not on the Cavs, and the person he dunked on don't play no more, and all this. So all that stuff, bam, that increased value. Like with stuff like this, things that are worth things, you know, designer clothes, all that. It's worth that much because we say so. Or somebody said so. So that's the thing about NFT game. It's just like that. So if you hop in, thing is, it's only going to be, the cheapest it's ever going to be is when you first buy it. Because it's only going to keep going up. Yeah, at some point it might it might plateau. and then uh, that. But you're not supposed to be, NFTs, unless you really think that image looked that good, you wasn't planning on holding it that long anyway. So that's the I still about can't it. believe people are, are willing to buy your NFT off of you for 200 grand. It's like someone buying your tops card off of you for two hundred grand. Like you know, what, what's what's the what's the what's the, the I mean, long term value in that? People buy ba- Babe Ruth baseball cards for as much money as they they can. That's like, a little different to me, personally speaking. I think the value of a card is worth more than the clip of that highlight because I much rather just go watch it on YouTube. But I guess maybe that's the old school in me. You ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. I I feel out one hundred percent because I mean. I remember I went back and looked at some of the baseball cards, basketball cards, football cards I had. I'm like, people used to say this would be worth some money. I wonder if it's worth some money. And I'm like, try to sell them here and there. And that's back when we had stuff like comic book stores, which are damn near obsolete. So it's, it's a little, it's a different ball game. And NFTs are basically what those were for us. That's how I feel. Except cost more from the jump. Seriously. You got some important things to people? We'll give some light today. Come, come back and visit us with that metaverse. All right. So, you know, we're we're in a time where we have to start finding extra income. We went through a lot last year. A lot of us are still going through a lot this year. And whatever normal was for us before is it it, it doesn't look like it's coming back. (laughs) So, you know, those who are struggling, I was told by people, you know, who have money and who are who care about people who don't have that much money. Those who were struggling before are struggling even more right now, you know, especially if they don't have a lot of people around them to pool resources together. So, yeah, stuff like this, like what we're doing right now and anybody else where you can get stuff like this from information like this from about how to make extra income and and help yourself out or help your family out and relieve some of this financial pressure on us in this time, in this trying time. is something that we need to look into and do our homework on. And um, self-employment is something that you can look into, too, if you had any dreams chasing them hard, because uh, life is not going to get easier from what I've been hearing and what I see. That's for sure. Hey, what you got for a parting shot? Hey, man. Hey, if you want some more of that information, y'all, y'all find me on Twitter. Low-key Kenny, I'm out there. I got, again, I got a couple connections. I got a couple things I'm looking into. I got a homeboy. He said he's going to make some NFTs. He didn't tell me what the value, volume of the value going to be, but I'm going to stay in touch with him because he, he the money man. So he's a smart dude. So I listen to him when he, when he preached his gospel. But like Rook said, man, we down on hard times and uh, it's been, a, it's been a rough over 18 months. I'm used to say 18 months, but time keep moving. Nothing like, like I said, man, the big boy's been eating for a long time. They could afford to share off their plate a little bit more. So I'm, I'm, st- I'm, I'm looking to take some off their plate because they ain't hurting. Like, like Tyrese said in uh, Too Fast, Too Furious, uh, we hungry. We hungry. Yo, and your pockets ain't empty. So, so yeah, make sure you hit up uh, Kenny on Twitter. You know where all the is. We keep him, keep him in there. Hopefully, he'll help you guys out a little more than he does his friend that put him on the geeked out. And here he go. Here he go. Fantasy boom of us, you know what I'm saying? But you know, hopefully, it look out for y'all. But since this is a chance in D Rook podcast episode, we haven't did this in a while, so you know, this is how we always close it out. So we'll do this for Kenny. Four questions first thing to come to your head. First question is, is if you weren't doing what you're doing, what would you be doing? I'll be a sports analyst. That's a good one, that, that definitely makes sense. Second, who's your biggest influence? Biggest influence on pops. All right. Third one is what's your favorite curse word? Fuck. That seems to be a lot of people. And last thing is, if you had any superpower, what would it be? Super speed. 
Has anyone ever said super speed? I don't, I don't, man, we gotta look back. I yeah, mean, I've heard some people say they want to fly, so I said yeah. I want to fly. And invisibility and shit like that. Yeah, y- y'all gonna have to go back and check out the Chance D Road podcast and see if anyone's ever said it. But with that being said, you know, we back. You know what I'm saying? We'll let you know when we come back, but we're here. We're gonna give you some more information. We're gonna try to get some more guests that can educate y'all, educate us as well. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people ain't telling us what we need to know. So with that being said, Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Send us to someone that don't know about Bitcoin, that don't know about the metaverse, that don't know about the Hall Rock app. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe you don't know you live in Florida and you got friends that know about it, but you know what I'm saying? Maybe. So check it out. Send it to them. There we are. You won't watch them switch. You can never be me. I wouldn't want to be you. You a sucker, then you a sucker, then.